So I'd like to welcome Alex to the show, who's used machine learning to drive a virtual car in a 3D game, all powered by a custom TensorFlow.js model. Now, before we learn more about that, Alex, tell us a bit more about who you are and what's your prior experience with machine learning. Hi, Jason. Thanks uh, for having me on your show. Uh, I'm a software engineer here in Moscow, Russia, uh, working mostly in enterprise accounting automation. Uh, but besides of that, I'm eager to learn new things uh, about the technology. Actually, my favorite uh, topic is web technology and JavaScript in particular. And this is amazing uh, how uh, you can actually do uh, so many things with JavaScript uh, besides the browser. For example, in IoT, in robots and in machine learning as well. Just to name a few technologies where JavaScript is uh, applicable. And there is a saying uh, like, always bet on JavaScript, and I cannot <laughs> agree more. That's awesome. So it's great to have you with us today. But what inspired you to make this? I, I was and I'm still interested in the self-driving car topic. And I found that Udacity have the self-driving car course. In that time, I was thinking, uh, OK, and could we do this uh, in JavaScript using TensorFlow.js? And uh, uh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. It works. Yeah. It, it, we, we could. The answer is we could. That sounds very awesome. And I think clearly everyone watching right now wants to see this in action. So maybe do you have a demo for us that you could show? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, let's go straight to the final model, which uh, drives uh, the car. So you could see here on the left side, we have the Udacity simulator and we open it in, in uh, the mode when we could send the commands to the car. And we on the right side in the terminal, we start uh, the driving script, which uses the model we have built to drive a car. And you can see it, it drives. It knows uh, only two commands, only to turn left or turn right. It actually sends the angles and we can see the steering angle. And uh, the positive value is turn right and the negative value is turn left. And the car pretty much drives pretty well on that truck. Cool. So essentially then you train this by grabbing a lot of frames from this 3D engine. <laughs> I'm guessing you're driving the car initially and then dumping these frames to disk somewhere. And then you're using that to train some kind of vision model to um, uh, allow it to know what your rotation for the steering wheel was in that moment of time. <laughs> and then of course you train the model and then see what happens with the results, right? Is that basically the flow that you did there? Uh, yes, uh, you got it right. The basic flow is like this and simulator, it provides great tooling for that. It works basically in two modes. The one is the training mode when you drive uh, yourself the car in this environment and it records three images of the front camera, of the left camera and the right ca camera the view on the road and for each image uh, it also records the steering value the throttling value and i think braking value but in that project we are using only the steering value and uh, the interesting thing uh, here is that you have uh, to drive really carefully because the car like a kid would learn <laughs> from you from your style of driving and actually this is called uh, the behavioral cloning uh, that that uh, um, style of uh, machine learning, of car, of self-driving car yeah. learning. And, and which model was it that you're using to uh, make this work? I used my proper model, which uh, took me uh, a bit of time uh, to figure out. I experimented uh, what is the least size of the model. Uh, could I use less uh, convolutional layers? I see. Could yeah. I more use, efficient. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So more efficient because uh, to to train it really quickly and okay. to get yeah. the results. Yeah. And uh, the, in the video, what we are, uh, what we was watching uh, a minute ago, uh, actually, uh, that driving uh, is uh, able after just one epoch of training. Uh, oh, okay. That wow, model. that's yeah, very impressive. So, 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 yeah, yeah. And the training on my machine, that's a couple of minutes. And on on the, I have MacBook Air actually. And on the powerful machine with a GPU, I think it's less than a minute. Okay, uh, very and, good. Yeah, and yeah. it could, and, and it could drive. And I think, and almost that was like central idea of the this project I built is to show that first we could use JavaScript for drive a self-driving car. We could use JavaScript for machine learning. And all of that with uh, really few lines of code. 
it's uh, I think no more than three screens of code, including uh, like helper functions. And that that's in the JavaScript language, or did you do you start in Python and convert to JavaScript? Actually, yes, uh, I experimented first uh, with Python to find uh, the better model architecture. Oh, how I many see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many layers to use, and uh, do I have to use max pooling? What the size of these layers? Do I use the uh, like uh, how many dense layers? All that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and then. I implemented everything in JavaScript and the model itself, it's trained actually using tensorflow.js in JavaScript. There is no, 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 any, no, any conversion because if I experimented on my machine with JavaScript, with no video engine, I, right. I you needed the remote to, machine to kind of yeah, tinker around. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 That's that fair would enough. be more complicated. So this demo clearly worked really, really well. And I'm curious. What paths did you take or did you try to get to this point so it worked as well as it does? The most of uh, the challenges was to understand how the simulator works, works and uh, to uh, create an efficient and a small uh, model to use in that project. First, uh, I dig deeper in the simulator. It's uh, open sourced so i found uh, what commands i have to send to the car what are the numbers which uh, are in the output another big challenge is to figure out the um, efficient model to to find uh, how many layers uh, do i have in in that particular model uh, how, how many connections and all that stuff the first models uh, they obviously didn't work well because i pro i created uh, for for example, a very deep structured model, yeah, deep, deep network, and I could could not uh, like train it properly in in the small amount of time. So we have to figure out what works well, what works not, and uh, I think this is a, like what machine learning uh, like engineers do, uh, and they they tinker with with uh, different. Uh, uh, architectures with different models and uh, yeah. try, uh, trying to fi find the, the best way find out to, what, yeah, works best. to, to, make, it, to <laughs> make it work. Yeah. Cool. And, and how did your car handle different uh, game environments maybe? Uh, does it work well on all different levels or do you need the custom training data for each? Oh, uh, yes. And uh, this is uh, the really good question. Thanks for, for this one. Uh, in the simulator, they provide two environments and uh, for the model we are uh, seeing uh, uh, was trained uh, using only one of the environments and uh, the second one, uh, the model never ha have never seen. And if we start, but we could, could uh, actually enter the, in this environment and start the driving script and uh, we, we could see that it goes off the track to the accident almost immediately. It remembers only the track it, it's in. We could go here uh, in two ways from, from there. We could either uh, train another model on this different track in, in a different environment. It's a question, uh, would it be enough, uh, the, the model for the first track I created with two convolutional layer, one max, uh, which is following uh, each by one uh, max pooling layer. Would it be enough for the second one, or uh, the second one is more complicated? Uh, uh, thus, we we will need a complicated model, and this is, yeah. this model is not enough for that track. And uh, I think the pinnacle of all that uh, should be uh, the thing to to do a model um, which could uh, behave well on both tracks. And yes. <laughs> I think th th this is the real self-driving car, which could drive itself uh, no matter what environment it's in. Yeah, so a lot more training data required there, I'm sure, for training that model. Yeah. But uh, with enough, I'm sure you'd get there. So good stuff. <laughs> so if people want to try this out for themselves, uh, how can they do so? Is there a website or some GitHub code available? Yes, sure. There, there is a GitHub repository with the project, uh, and it uh, it also have a README file uh, which uh, describes how to use it, and it also ha have a, a link to uh, Udacity Simulator, 
So uh, one have to clone this project, install our dependencies, including TensorFlow.js, and uh, also install the Udusty simulator. Sure. And yeah. uh, you're all really set. Works. You could record. <laughs> uh, it, okay. uh, yeah, it, it should work. I would like to encourage people to experiment further and uh, experiment and gi give give some like framework, some some tooling, some like boilerplate to to uh, from from which uh, uh, the many many possibilities are uh, available. Okay, that's great. So we'll put those links in the description after the show. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks, Jason, for inviting me. Uh, it was a great pleasure and a great honor to me to participate in that show. And uh, I also would like to thank uh, all the creative people uh, who bring uh, their project to that show. And I, I find inspiration in the, that project. And obviously, thanks uh, to the whole TensorFlow team for uh, maintaining this wonderful library. Cool. Thank you. And see you next time. <laughs>